Hello and welcome to the release of a Wingu 4.2. In this release, we'll have just as other releases, uh, features and novelties in four different areas. And this is actually very similar to previous releases of a Wingu. First of all, you'll have a lot of improvements and continuous improvements of the user experience. This has been and still is today one of the big focus areas of a Wingu is to make sure that the user experience is as spot on as possible. Second area is aggregation. Uh, a Wingu is from day one a workspace aggregator and this is definitely one of the areas where we keep on investing in because this is really one of the things where our customers appreciate what we're doing. Thirdly is security. A Wingu is a workspace solution and just as any workspace solution, security needs to be central to the technology. It needs to be optimizing security as well as compliancy and so we've added some new uh, uh, capabilities in this area as well. And then finally comes the foundation of a Wingu, which is multi-tenant and open API based. And we'll have some additional uh, enhancements there as well, making the platform even more CSP and even more enterprise grade ready as it already was. And now Steven is going to jump into some really specific features, demoing them and giving more context behind each of those selected features. So the first feature we want to demonstrate, which is new in a Wingu 4.2, is the SAML pre-authentication. Basically, it can be used to do a uh, pre-authentication against an external identity provider. And then once that uh, pre-authentication is done, the only thing a Wingo still needs is the, the password to let you uh, in. Um, for this demonstration, we have configured it uh, against uh, Azure AD. So uh, before going to uh, a Wingo, a Wingo will require an Azure AD pre-authentication. Um, to enable it, it's uh, in the uh, configure user connector of uh, a Wingo and you need to provide some, uh, some parameters like the uh, uh, access URI, um, entity ID, metadata URL, so some standard IDP settings. And once that is done, the effect is that uh, if you go to a website where uh, the uh, pre-authentication is enabled and it's the first time you're going to that website, you will be automatically redirected to your uh, identity provider, which is in my case uh, Azure AD. I'm uh, logging into my uh, identity provider with my uh, username and password over there. And then once this, uh, this login is successful, I will be redirected to, uh, to Awingu. On Awingu's side, I don't have to specify my, uh, my username anymore. The identity provider already did that. The only thing I have to provide is my, uh, my password. The nice thing is that once you're logged in and um, you would go again to the, to the same website and your uh, session token is still active, you, st you can just log in with uh, only providing the, the password. Another feature I would like to demonstrate is the direct links to apps or files. Uh, basically, it can be used to integrate Awingu into other environments. Uh, what I will demonstrate is to make like a direct uh, link from my desktop to a specific uh, application. So uh, on my environment, I have, for example, uh, Bob50, and I would like to have a direct link from on my desktop to this uh, application. Um, if I uh, go to the application and I enable the uh, extra information field, you will see that there is no uh, a direct link uh, um, available. If I uh, copy that link and, uh, for example, go to my desktop and uh, make a new shortcut, uh, I can open the app uh, directly. So, uh, I have made a, a shortcut. If I click on that link, the app will uh, open uh, immediately. And uh, it's not only with uh, apps we can do this, uh, but we can also use that uh, on files. So it's the same principle. If I go to my uh, files, I can, for example, go to my home uh, folder and uh, to this training folder. And in this training folder, I could, for example, make a link directly to this, uh, to this training folder, same way. So go to the information. Uh, copy the uh, copy the link, um, and then uh, if I'm making a, a second shortcut on my uh, on my desktop, uh, shortcut to this link, um, training folder. Um, if I'm going to that uh, link, it will directly open my uh, my folder. Another feature I would like to demonstrate is the improvements we have done in the file and the session sharing. Uh, basically, it is now possible to uh, share a file not only with everyone in the domain or with uh, everyone who has the link, but we have also now the possibility to specify specific uh, users. So we could, for example, say this, this file can only be shared with uh, Steven or with Arnaud and not with uh, anybody uh, else. 
Uh, next to that, we have done the same uh, improvements on the uh, application uh, session. So whenever you're uh, having an, uh, an application open, you already know we, you can uh, share the session. Also over there, we have done the, the same improvements. So it is now possible to specify uh, with, who it's, uh, with who you can share it. Uh, but also we have uh, added uh, things like password protection on, uh, on the session shares. Um, this is from, a, from an end user point of view. Uh, as an admin, we have also now added the possibility to specify uh, if you can share files or sessions only with internal users or with uh, public users also. So this is also something which has been added in the, in the features. There is now the, the possibility to specify if something is domain only or domain and public uh, sharing, both on the files and on the uh, sessions. Another feature where lots of customers were asking for was the possibility to take over sessions from a user which are triggered from the admin. So via the session sharing, it was already possible that a user shared his session. But for example, for support reasons, um, it could be handy that this could also be triggered from the uh, admin. This is something we added in the, in the dashboard. So in the activity pane, uh, as you can see, my uh, colleague uh, Arno is currently logged in and he has an uh, AS400 terminal session open. In the past, if he wanted to share that session with me, he had to uh, first share it on his uh, end, then send me the link and then I could uh, join. As you can see, there is now a possibility to uh, ask to join the session. Um, Arnaud will now be prompted for uh, allowing me to join. And as you can see, I've uh, joined his uh, session now. So this is also, uh, I think, an improvement in, uh, in using Awingu for uh, support purposes. Multi-factor authentication really is one of the key features in Awingu, and it has been part of our roadmap and our product since a very long time. I actually had a lot of very positive feedback from the market. And uh, with Awingu 4.2, we're extending that capability even further. You already had one-time password built in, now you also have time-based password solutions built in. So what it means from the end user perspective is we know not only support Google Authenticator, but now also Microsoft Authenticator, as well as some other authentication apps, but those would be the, the two main uh, names that your, uh, your end users will know. Now, um, those features are built in, and if this is not sufficient for you and you already use something else or you plan to use something else, we actually support a whole range of other MFA solutions as well. This can be radius-based solution, it can be SMS passcode, US security, Azure MFA, etc. So a wide range of solutions and really little excuse to no excuse not to use MFA going forward. Another improvement we have done is on the level of the reverse proxy uh, apps. Uh, this is uh, something which was introduced in Awingu 4.0, so uh, it's not only the possibility to integrate VDIs or, or RDP-based applications, but also uh, web applications through reverse proxy of Awingu. In the past releases, we have already done some updates, and also in this release, uh, we have added uh, something uh, new, which is the possibility to combine multiple web apps in the same stream. So, for example, if you have an application which requires you to authenticate first on another website and then come back to this website for further use, uh, this was not possible in the previous releases. In this release, it's possible because we now can merge multiple sites into one uh, single stream. So, another improvement in the user experience is now that we have the possibility to merge applications into the same uh, RDP stream. So, as you can see, this is now an option on, uh, on application level. So, Per app, you can decide if Awingu needs to optimize the RDP streams, yes or no. So for example, for Word, this is something we have uh, enabled. And as you can see, Word can run on application server one and application server uh, two, in my example. Uh, what is the effect of, uh, of this? If I'm starting, for example, a first application, so let me just start, for example, uh, Excel. As you can see, Excel is opening. It has to load the profile and the, and the, and the GPOs. Uh, my Excel session is open, so I have uh, Excel running in my, um, in my Awingu environment. If I'm now going back to my applications and uh, I would like to start Word, you will see that Word will be open directly. So there will no uh, start be of the, of the sessions, there will no uh, profile uh, be loaded. Everything is started uh, automatically. And as you can see, both are running into the same uh, RDP stream. So Stephen just uh, showed us a lot of the features in depth that we're bringing in Awingu 4.2. Now, Awingu 4.2 is more than those selected features. This is more part of this release. And just to uh, uh, close down with highlighting some of those features that we didn't do in deep dive. 
Um, in UX, actually, there's three of them. One is you can now do right click uh, for context menu. Right click as well as long touch if you're using a tablet device like an Android or Windows based device. Secondly, uh, for those applications um, that need to be run on small screen devices, sometimes it might provide to be useful to set a minimum size. Uh, this is not going to be the case for all of your application, but sometimes it might be useful if, for example, you plan to use iPad mini devices or something like that. So that capability is there as well. And then thirdly, um, if you're an administrator and you have scheduled downtimes or uh, works planned, etc., and you want to notify your end users, you can now push that notification as well to all your end users. Second area where we'll bring novelties is aggregation. Workspace aggregator, so aggregation is really key. And uh, there's a lot of talk going on on WVD, Windows Virtual Desktop. And actually with a Wingu today, you can already aggregate those Windows 10 Enterprise multi-sessions as well. So you can, you, can, you can aggregate them into a Wingu and make sure that you get all the benefits of the Wingu platform, as well as the licensing benefits of Windows 10 Enterprise multi-session. The final bucket where we're adding novelties is in the foundation of the platform. And there we really invested a lot to make it even more robust, even more enterprise grade ready. And we're talking there about features such as application session failover, uh, where uh, if one node fails, another node is going to pick up without any end customer impact, or at least with very minimal impact where, uh, where relevant and without any data loss for the end user. Secondly, we'll also support Kerberos based authentication on NLA level. With that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. And if you want more information, don't hesitate. Just go to www.awingu.com, read the full blog post, or just scroll through the, uh, the website for more information and customer cases. Or reach out to us if you'd like to have more information. Thank you.